our first proclamation of the Word of God. Tobit chapter 11, verse 5 through verse 17. The reading. Anna was sitting, watching the road by which her son would come. She was sure at once it must be, he and said to the father, Here comes your son with his companion. Raphael said to Tobias before, his, before he reached his father, I give you my word that your father's eyes will open. You must put the fish gall to his eyes. The medicine will smart and will draw a firmly, firmly white skin off his eyes. And your father will no more be blind, but will be able to see the light. The mother ran forward and threw her arms round her son's neck. Now I can die, she said. I have seen you again, and she wept. Tobit rose to his feet and stumbled across the courtyard. Through the door, Tobias came on towards him. He had the fish gall in his hand. He blew into his eyes and said, Steadying, take courage, father. With, his, with this, he applied the medicine, left it there a while. Then with both hands, peeled away a filmy skin from the corners of his eyes. Then his father fell on his knee and weep. He exclaimed, I can see you, my son, the light of my eyes, and he said, Blessed be God, blessed be his great name, blessed be all his holy angels, blessed be his great name forevermore. For having afflicted me, he has had pity on me, and now I see my son, Tobias. Tobias went indoors, joyfully blessing God and the top of his voice then he told his father everything how his journey had been successful and he had brought the silver back how he had married Sarah the daughter of Raquel how she was following him now close behind and could not be far from the gates of Nineveh Two bits set up to the gates of Nineveh to meet this daughter-in-law, giving joyful praise to God as he went. When the people of Nineveh saw him walking without guide and stepping forward as briskly as of old, they were astonished. Two bits described to them how God had taken pity on him and had opened his eyes. Then Tobit met Sarah, the bride of his son Tobias, and blessed her in these words. Welcome, daughter. Blessed be your God for sending you to us. My daughter, blessing on your father, blessing on, your, on my son Tobias, blessing on yourself, my daughter. Welcome now to your own house in joyfulness and then blessedness come in my daughter that they brought to joy to the Jews of Nineveh the word of the Lord please stand for the responsory psalm psalm 146 our response praise the Lord my soul praise the Lord O my soul while I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have being, while I my being. Response. Who keeps truth forever? Who executes justice for the oppressed? Who gives food to the hungry? The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. Response. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. 
the Lord watches over the stranger's response. He relieves and fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generation. Praise the Lord. Response. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark chapter 12. The reading. Then Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how is it that the scribes, the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your, post, your footstool. Therefore, David himself calls him Lord. How is he? Then his son and the common people heard him gladly. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In our text, the Lord Jesus wants to teach, the, the, especially the Pharisees, of who he is. That he is, we say, human and both also God. And he used the analogy of David's word in Psalm 101 that calling him Lord. Although at that time, during the, the, the time of Psalm, David is the king and the Lord of his people. But he said, how come that David the Lord and King of the, of the people at that time also called Lord with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So he asked them to this so because he wanted to explain to them that he, the Messiah, is standing before them. He is both man and God. Talking about his deity. And he wanted to explain also to them that, yes, he would come from David's uh, lineage as being as son, as being as human, but being as God, he is David's Lord. So being as human, he would come to David's lineage. He will be David's son, talking about his human side. But talking about being his God side, he is David's Lord. That's what to explain to them. But what I want to emphasize is how much explanation Jesus would tell these Pharisees, they would not believe. They would not acknowledge him that he is the Messiah. Now, as we read this deep, we say theology, how we could translate this in our daily life, this what we have, these three verses. Maybe as of today, we have far more understanding than the Pharisees that Jesus is both man and God, as the candle would want to represent or the meaning that we have said about that. But still, how it would relate in our life? As David, as king and lord at the time, David acknowledged him that he is Lord. He is, at the time, David is king and lord of his people, but he acknowledged that there's somebody who is above him. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you could see the, the humility of David being as a king and Lord of his people, acknowledging that there's the higher person or king and Lord. Now, to us in our daily life, as we have far more understanding of, about Jesus, 
So you still acknowledge the King and Lord? Like David, with that humility to acknowledge him as Lord? Or in our daily life, still we are the Lord. We're still the King of our lives. We want to do our own thing. We will not submit to God. We will not submit His way. We, we still do what we want. We have now all the knowledge, maybe, far beyond what the uh, Pharisees have learned. How we could translate down our daily lives. Seeing that two candles, maybe we know the meaning. But the application of our daily lives, do we acknowledge as Lord? Or do we only know the meaning, the translation of those symbols? But does our life reflect it that we really acknowledge Him as Lord, as our God? In our decisions, in our, in our ministries, in our families, do we, do we acknowledge Him really as Lord? Far beyond. Sometimes our life and our, our uh, faith does not synchronize and does not affect other people's lives. Because that's also one way to go to mission that truly we believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior. And he could, people could see it in our lives. It's easy to believe in us to share to them the word because somehow they could really see it in our lives. They could see we acknowledge truly that he is Lord. Not only we understand the meaning, but we are living it. So may it be once again, brothers and sisters, we have now the Bible, we have Ma Parma would say at least more understanding than the Pharisees about Jesus, our Messiah, our Lord, so help us, may God help us to translate it in our daily lives through our submission, obedience to God. And that's also our submission to our leaders, submission to the ways or to things that have been asked to, ask us to do. So these deep things of theology could be always translated into a practical way of our, in our daily lives by practicing it. And that really would prove that we really believe what we are saying. We really believe and proclaim that Jesus is truly the Lord of our lives. Please stand.